I'm James Glick. The book is The Information, A History, A Theory, A Flood. And it's meant to be a history of information in human affairs. Information being a thing that all of a sudden in the middle of the last century became real, took on a scientific meaning um, with the birth of information theory. The notion of a random number is full of difficulties. Can there be such a thing as a particular random number, a certain random number? This number is arguably random. Then again, it's special. It begins a book published in 1955 with the title, A Million Random Digits. When the first batch of digits was tested, statisticians discovered significant biases. Digits or groups of digits or patterns of digits that appeared too frequently or not frequently enough. Finally, however, the tables were published. Randomness might be defined in terms of order, its absence, that is. This orderly little number sequence can hardly be called random, yet it makes a cameo appearance in the middle of the famous million random digits. In terms of probability, that's to be expected. Zero, 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 zero is as likely to occur as any of the other 99,999 possible five-digit strings. Researchers have established that human intuition is useless both in predicting randomness and in recognizing it. Humans drift toward pattern willy-nilly. The New York Public Library bought a million random digits and shelved it under psychology. In 2010, it was still available from Amazon for $81. We have an awareness that, um, that human speech, that printed text, that uh, newspapers turning yellow in garbage cans and music recorded on compact discs and video being beamed through the ether, that all of that is the same thing, that all of that, all of those are species of information. And to be able to think in those terms is, is to be very smart, I think, to, to, to have a knowledge of the world that, is, that surpasses what our ancestors had. And I wanted, so I wanted to understand that. The story that's the saddest in the book is the story of Ada Byron, the poet's daughter who um, is just now achieving a, a kind of fame in the computer era because she's being rediscovered. There's a programming language named after her and, and she's, she's a hero for a new generation of computer scientists. But of course she was unknown for the intervening hundred years because what she accomplished was mostly hidden. It was hidden because she was a woman and she couldn't publish anything under her own name and also because the, th the thing she was working on was so weird, Charles Babbage's difference engine and analytical engine, a true genius obsessed with the idea of creativity, the idea of imagination and with understanding the workings of her own mind. The Royal Society, you know, even though I'm a Yank, uh, has some special meaning for me. I wrote a biography of Isaac Newton and it's awfully nice for me to be recognized by this institution. I worried that there was a little bit of hubris in, in saying the entire universe is information and I'm going to write a book about information uh, and the history thereof. People inevitably will finish the book and then say, well, what is information anyway? and I still won't be able to answer.